Thank you very much, Chair. Um, good afternoon, Senators. And I'm pleased to be here with you today to bring two bills to this House which aim to amend our Constitution to reflect the values of a more inclusive Ireland. Our Constitution is the fundamental law of Ireland. It should be a reflection of who we are and of the values that we hold dear. But right now, the text of our Constitution doesn't reflect our values. It excludes thousands of people from the protection of being named as part of the constitutional family. It describes a very singular place for women within Irish society, and it makes no allowances for care being a role for both women and men. Any change to our Constitution is significant. It's meaningful. The amendments being proposed in these two bills build on previous reforms to our Constitution, children's rights, marriage equality, and the repeal of the Eighth Amendment. They reflect the continuation of our journey towards a more compassionate, inclusive, and equal society. There are a great many people in Ireland today for whom these changes will mean a lot. It will make a difference for people like Breda Murray, Breda is a single mother and a grandmother whose two eldest children were born in an unmarried relationship and two younger children were born in a marriage that has now ended. She said, and I quote, there is absolutely no difference in how I love them and care for them and no difference for them in how they love me as, as a mother. And yet, right now, our constitution makes a distinction between those children. As Breda said, Ireland must change this anarchic and discriminatory clause so that all children can receive the same rights and protections as each other, whether their parents are married or not. The first bill we're discussing today is the 39th Amendment of the Constitution, the Family Bill, to which I'll speak to now. The Constitution was written at a time when society only recognised, only respected one kind of family, the family based on marriage. Non-marital families were made feel like they were not a full part of our society. Those who fell outside the narrow ideal of the marital family were, and are to this day, denied constitutional recognition as a family. Single mothers and their children in particular were stigmatised, were marginalised. This bill aims to address that inequality by amending Article 41 of the Constitution to provide for a wider concept of family. The proposed amendment reaffirms the family as the fundamental unit of society. Crucially, it does this in a way that recognises families beyond those based on marriage, including one-parent families and couples who choose, to marry, choose not to marry and their children. The approach taken by government with this bill is twofold. Firstly, the amendment would formally delink marriage and family within Article 41.3.1 by amending the wording from the, pledge, the state pledges itself to guard with special care the institution of marriage on which the family is founded and to protect it against attack. Two, the state pledges itself to guard with special care the institution of marriage and to protect it against attack. This is important. It's this current wording which has been read by the courts as limiting the constitutionally protected family to the marital family. The special protection for marriage is not being removed and I think it's really important that we make that point. Secondly, the government is proposing to amend Article 41.1.1 to read, the state recognises the family, whether founded on marriage or on other durable relationships, as the natural primary and fundamental unit group of society and as a moral institution possessing inalienable and imprescriptible rights, antecedent and superior to all positive law. This proposed amendment to this specific section is a deliberate choice with deliberate intent. It's a positive and upfront affirmation that the concept of family in Article 41 is no longer limited to the marital family and also encompasses other durable, other committed relationships, such as one parent families, such as cohabiting couples and their children. There's been much focus during debate, the debate on this bill in Dáil Éireann and in media coverage of the proposals on the inclusion of the word durable within the proposed amendment. To be clear, the term durable relationships is intended to encompass relationships of strength, of stability and commitment, such that they are consistent with that existing description of a family in Article 41, one that is the fundamental unit group of society, one that is a moral institution. This proposed wording would expand the concept of fa family to cohabitants with or without children and to one-parent families. 
I understand there were some concerns about whether the term durable relationships covers parent-child relationships. I can confirm that this is unequivocally the intention of this proposal, uh, that it, and this is very strongly supported by the fact that the term the family, which we are discussing in Article 41, also appears in Article 42.1, and in that context very clearly encompasses parent-child relationships. The approach seeks to, build, to positively recognise families beyond the marital family. It seeks to build in a consistent way on the existing guardrails that exist within Article 41, such as the terms necessary basis of social order and indispensable to the welfare of the nation and the state. These are powerful concepts. They hold weight. And the inclusion of the new term of durable relationships is consistent with these existing concepts. The approach also aims to recognise the more inclusive concept of family in a positive, visible and upfront manner within Article 41, rather than solely in subsection in 41.3.1, which is centred on marriage. In relation to this, it's important to note that the proposed amendments to 41.3.1 do not remove the special, the unique status of marriage within the Constitution. The proposal remo removes the words on which the family is founded from Article 41.3.1. However, the state's pledge within the Constitution to guard with special care the institution of marriage and protect it against the attack will remain in place. Marriage is an important institution, it's highly valued. It has also become a more inclusive institution in this country with the passing of the referendum on marriage for same-sex couples in 2015. This amendment will not take away from that, nor will it make marriage any less important. The proposed amendments aim to update our constitution so it reflects and recognises families in an inclusive way. In doing so, they respond to the recommendations of the Citizens' Assembly and the Joint Oireachtas Committee, whose crucial work in helping to get this point I'd like to acknowledge, and I acknowledge many members of this House were deeply involved in that process. For the purpose of the Irish Census, a family is defined as a couple with or without children, or a one-parent family with one or more children. By this definition, there are over 1.3 million families in the Irish state on census night 2022. Of those, almost one in five was headed by, were headed by one parent. The proposals contained in this bill are not merely symbolic. They will ensure that constitutional protections for the family will extend to those families, numbering in the hundreds of thousands. It will give to those families the right to manage decisions within their own families, give them the protection which currently applies only to the marital family. There's something deeply meaningful about this proposal which I think actually transcends those practical legal effects. If we look at how single mothers and their children in particular were treated in the past, how they were often treated as lesser, how they were pushed to the shadows in Irish society, and this was against the backdrop of a constitution that never recognised them as a family, that doesn't recognise them as a family today, that doesn't see their relationships as being a fundamental unit of society, that doesn't recognise them as being indispensable to the welfare of our state and our nation. The recognition that families do exist beyond the marital family, it's now reflected throughout statute, legislation like the Civil Partnership and Certain Rights and Obligations of the Cohabitants Act 2010. So in this way, our society and even our statute, even the bills and acts we pass, have moved ahead of our constitution in terms of the reality of the modern family. However, until our constitution recognises those families which are founded on committed relationships other than marriage, we cannot say that as a state and as a society we have fully faced this aspect of our past and we've rejected the discrimination that these families faced. Since publishing this bill, I've been approached by people who, and have been reminded yet again of how hurtful it is that they and their children are still not recognised in our constitution, in the founding document of our state. And this referendum is our opportunity to put things right. Now is the time to finally recognise in our constitution those families and all families which are founded on committed relationships other than marriage. It will allow us as a society to reject the discrimination that, was faced, that these families faced in the past and to say to these families that they are just as fundamental to our society as any other family. 
Chair, I commend this bill to the House. And Chair, if I could just seek your indulgence for 30 seconds. Okay, yeah. I know this House had a, a very special event earlier this afternoon in the terms of recognising the uh, retirement of Senator Norris. I just want to take this opportunity to recognise him as well. And I suppose just to state, it's not often in your lifetime that you uh, get to meet or get to work with a person who has, an abs has had an absolutely tangible impact on the rights you enjoy as a person. Uh, I enjoy rights. I enjoy freedoms of this country, as in this country, as someone who's gay, solely on the basis of Senator Norris's bravery in taking a case first in the Irish courts and later to the European Court of Human Rights. So I want to recognise him and uh, thank him today. He will be a great gap in this House and in, in, uh, in Irish society, but I and many others are hugely grateful for his contribution over many decades. Thank you. Thank Chair. you, Minister.